The concept of discipline can often feel vague, and vagueness is a clear road to procrastination. Do you have a clear definition of discipline? Even if you do, the concept of discipline can still feel big and overwhelming. In this video, I'll dive deeper into defining exactly what discipline is, why habits are not enough, and the different types of discipline, something I haven't seen anyone talk about. I'll also show you how to practice and continually improve your discipline for each types of discipline, ultimately leading you to living the life you want. I define discipline as doing what you know you should do when you don't feel like it. This means that motivation is not part of this definition, as motivation involves doing what you know you should do when you feel like it. Motivation will therefore not be part of this video, and neither will habits, as habits are actions you do on autopilot without requiring discipline. However, I will discuss how discipline plays into forming and maintaining habits. Mike Tyson also has an interesting definition of discipline, doing what you hate to do like you love it. This is basically an extreme angle of the definition we just presented, but I like to look at the definition as a scale. Discipline is doing what you know you should do when you don't feel like it, and you can do it as you hate it or as you love it. Imagine doing it as you love it on the far right of the scale and doing it as you hate it on the far left. The most important thing is to just do it, whether you do it as you love it or hate it. However, it does make sense to try to be as far right on the scale as possible, as doing it like you love it will likely be more efficient and sustainable. While focusing on habits allows you to not need discipline, you still need discipline to build a habit in the first place. You also need discipline to maintain a habit. It's inevitable that we will fall out of a habit. There is a saying that missing a habit once is a mistake, but missing it twice is the start of a new habit. Correcting a missed habit requires discipline. You won't miss a habit once and never miss it again. You'll continue to miss it here and there, and snapping yourself back and maintaining your habit requires discipline. Self-discipline is crucial and a fundamental characteristic for anyone who wants to be the best version of themselves and create the life they want. Before moving on, I just want to quickly mention my free newsletter. If you want to dive even deeper into self-improvement concepts, get my free Notion templates for a limited time, or just get to know me better, join my free newsletter that is linked below. Now let's get back to the video. I like to divide discipline into different types, depending on the enemy I'm facing. I have discipline against big fears in the moment, discipline against doing the important task you know you should do, discipline against small distractions, or discipline when I'm tired later in the day. The reason I have divided discipline into these types is because of the similar feelings that arise for these situations and how it feels to assert discipline in each case. For example, big fears in the moment feels more like a life or death situation. These could be situations like presenting in front of a big crowd, discussing something important with your boss, or talking to a girl in the street. On the other hand, discipline against doing the important task you know you should do doesn't feel like life or death at all. It's a different feeling, but I like how Brian Tracy refers to it as eating the frog. This is such an interesting way to look at it, because it really feels like that. Although the solutions to these situations might be similar, and we're going to look at the solutions soon, it definitely helps me to have categorized them and view them as different enemies. I've categorized my discipline into the situations that often arise for me, but you can divide it into as many situations and feelings as you like. I suggest starting with the three situations you face most often, and if you want to divide into more after that, feel free to do so. For the solutions, I'll share how I combat one of my discipline enemies. Since discipline is very personal, consider my solutions as inspirations to develop your own strategies. For discipline against big fears in the moment, I have a few things. I'll list them out first and explain them after. Go or move ownership. Future me, future benefits, past victories, disgusting me, shift focus to them, and shift focus to experimentation. My plan A is to think, go or move. I just want to think of moving my body, nothing else. In moments of big fear, your mind wants to think of everything that can go wrong, and if you allow it to go down that route, it will paralyze you. This plan often works, but if it doesn't, I'll switch to plan B. Plan B involves different mindset shifts. First one is ownership, where I remind myself that no one is coming to save me. I'm solely and fully responsible for my life. I need to take responsibility to not only take opportunities that come to me, but to create them myself. After this mindset shift, I will go back to plan A and just start moving. This shift often removes the mental block that prevented me from moving during plan A. If the ownership mindset doesn't work, I'll run through other mindset shifts. For example, I will think about what future me would do through the question. If I was 5% more like the person I wanted to be, what would I do right now? Then I'll try to go back to plan A and just move. 
I'll run through all the different mindset shifts on my list until I'm able to just move. The reason I have all these different types of mindset shifts is that different ones click at different times. Some may work one time, but not another time. Some may work for a while, but then stop working. Having these various mindsets that I go through increases the likelihood that I will be able to act despite my big fear in the moment. This is how I continuously practice my self-discipline when these situations arise. In fact, these are the only times you can practice self-discipline. By definition, only when you don't feel like it can you practice self-discipline. Be grateful when these situations arise, because it's the only time you can practice and strengthen your self-discipline. The last thing I want to touch upon is tracking discipline. A lot of people expect to be super disciplined all the time, to be able to do everything without ever missing anything. While this ambition is good, it is not realistic and can be detrimental. This expectation often leads you to becoming emotional and feeling a big loss of confidence when you miss a day, because you are inevitably going to miss a day. A much better way to approach this is by looking at your discipline over a longer period of time. Instead of just looking at it day by day, look at it over a period of a week or a month. Are you, on average, becoming more disciplined? This approach is better, because even if you have a bad day, you can still be on the right track over the longer term. This perspective makes it easier to avoid being too hard on yourself, and worst case, giving up. This is why tracking the things you want to improve is so important. It helps you maintain a long-term view and focus on your average progress. Also, the act of tracking itself will make you more disciplined and motivated through increased awareness and feedback. I use my own personal tracker called the Ultimate Life Tracker, which you can check out in the link down below. But you can also use whatever tracker you like. The most important thing is to just track. To wrap things up, discipline is about consistent progress, not perfection. By understanding and practicing discipline in various areas of your life and tracking your progress over time, you will improve and achieve your goals. Start small, stay consistent, and you'll see significant improvements.